Stayallday.com. You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and offensively, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all that together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is some harsh truths about the thought leadership business. We're going to get into those of you who are in thought leadership. You need to listen up, grab a pen and paper, take notes on what I'm about to tell you. But before I get started, let me let you all know that I do send out a text message. It's probably on a regular basis by this point. As of this recording, haven't nailed down or decided what that regular basis is going to be, but it will be on a regular basis. So by the time you hear this, you should already know what it is. Text me at my number to join my text community. So you're getting that message. My number is 305-384-6894. Be in my text community. Whatever gets sent through that number will be coming straight from me. You're going to want to get it. And I guarantee you it's going to help you keep your mental game and your professional game sharp. Secondly, work on your game university. That is the place where we funnel everything. All right, everything we do, we are sending you to work on your game university. You want to learn more from me? Go to work on your game university. You want to take your game further based on what you hear today? Go to work on your game university. You are looking to improve in your mindset, your strategies, your systems, and your accountability? Go to work on your game university. You're not sure what you want in life? Go to work on your game university. Everything is work on your game university. The link is work on your game university.com is down below in the description. It is right next to the number to get the text. Make sure you go there and see what's happening. Only way you can work with me directly is, guess what? Work on your game university. So all that out of the way, let's get into this topic. Some harsh truths about the thought leadership business. Now, many people who listen to this show, some of you whom I know and have met and have worked with personally, you are in or would like to be in the thought leadership business. Those of you who are not familiar with what the thought leadership business is, you're not sure if I'm referring to you. This includes all forms of intellectual property, meaning you are taking knowledge and you are packaging it and selling it. That's thought leadership. You are packaging knowledge. You are in thought leadership. Now, some people do this in different ways. For example, you could work in the financial services industry in some ways that is thought leadership. That's not directly what I'm talking about here because you are using your knowledge to help people. But really what they are seeing you as is someone who's offering them the finance thing. But even though you're using your intelligence, I mean, you got to use your intelligence in every job. If you're a race car driver. You have to use some level of intelligence. If you pick up trash, you got to use some level of intelligence. Thought leadership is where the main thing that you're offering, the main offering is some form of knowledge, insight, uh, information, uh, experience. You're not offering. There's not like a tangible thing outside of your knowledge that you are selling. So this is what thought leadership means. So these are people who are professional speakers, for example. If you go give a speech and someone pays you for it, there's no physical product that they get as the speech. What they get is the experience of hearing you give the speech. That is the thing. When you write a book, yes, people can get the physical book, but it's the words on the page that they're actually wanting. It's not the book itself. The physical book is not the thing. It's the words in the book that they want. Coaching, for example, there's no physical product that comes with coaching. Even though somebody could give you a physical product, they may send you a nice little care package. But the thing that you're paying for is not the care package. You're paying for the actual experience of being helped by that person. A course, for example, usually there's nothing physical that comes with a course, even though someone may have a physical copy of it that they write down. But the main thing you're getting out of a course is the knowledge and the insights. All right. So this is what I mean when I say intellectual property. Uh, podcasting, for example, is another example of thought leadership. Really, the thing that you're getting here is not, you know, Anything you get through the phone, there's nothing tangible here. It's just the fact that you get to hear what I have to say and you are using it, you're entertained by it, you laugh at it, you cry at it, it makes you smarter, you apply it, whatever. This is all intellectual property. What I'm exchanging with you is my knowledge and insight, my approach, and you're getting it into your head. That's thought leadership. So today I'm gonna to give you a harsh, some harsh business lessons about some things that go on in this industry that you should know about or you may already be experiencing. Let me be clear that this is not an all-inclusive list. <laughs> there are many things that I'm not mentioning here today that can go on a maybe a, a continuation of this list, but let this be a starter kit for you. Just some basic things that I want you all to understand. Point number one, topic once again is some harsh truths about the thought leadership business. Number one, you are talking to two to five percent of the population tops. 
of the world population, you're talking to two to 5% of people total when you're in the thought leadership space. Why is this? Because these are the only people, two to 5% of the population that actually want and will consume and could possibly apply what you share. And I'm talking people in thought leadership. So I'm not saying some um, gossip blogger does not count as thought leadership. I'm talking someone who is exchanging actual knowledge, experience, and insights that is designed to help people get better. That's the kind of thought leadership I'm talking about. Only two to 5% of people are even looking for this kind of stuff or would be happy that they found it if they came across it, let alone would they actually consume it, let alone would they actually apply it. Uh, there are, there's levels to this. Some larger percentages of people may be looking for it or would be happy to hear about it and might consume it, but probably are not going to do anything with it, meaning they will consume the stuff you put out, but they're not actually going to apply it and get a result to where you can look good because you can use them as a success story. That's not going to happen with a larger percentage of people. Now, you got to understand what you're actually doing when you're in the thought leadership space. What you are doing is sharing knowledge, information, material, insight to help people get better and do better. And let me let you in on a secret. Most people are not interested in that. Most human beings are not interested in getting better or doing better, let alone are they interested in getting better and doing better. Most people are not interested in either one. This is just the truth. That's why I said two to 5%. Now let's be clear, two to 5% of the population is still a lot of people. All right, two to 5% of 8 billion people is still a lot of people. All right, so you shouldn't feel bad or sad or feel like you made the wrong choice in getting into this industry. That's still a lot of people to reach. Over the course of your entire career, you probably will not reach all the people who this two to 5% entails, encompasses. However, you are not talking to everybody. Okay, you need to keep in mind, you ain't talking to everybody. So don't be disappointed when you talk to an audience of people and a good percentage of them are simply not interested in what you're talking about. That's the way it's supposed to be. All right, that's not, you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> They're not interested because they ain't never going to be interested. It doesn't matter who said it. All right, this is just what it is. Most people are not interested in getting better. And also, a, a further point here, changing people's thinking is an exercise in futility. Changing people's thinking is an exercise in futility. What does that mean? You are not in the business of changing minds. All right, that is not the business you want to be in. I told you this in episode number 1669. You are not trying to change people's minds. Don't ever try to change people's minds. I mean, you could try, but it was it's a bad idea for you to try to change people's minds because they're not going to change. Now, you may be able to convince someone to be quiet for the moment or pretend to agree with you, but they don't really agree with you. They're just pretending to agree with you. So you stop talking or they ran out of arguments. So they got quiet, but you didn't actually change their mind. You, you will never change another person's mind. Here's the facts, people. Stupid people. <coughs> excuse me. Stupid people tend to stay stupid. This is just how life works. People who are dumb are going to be dumb. People who don't want to get better will continue not wanting to get better. People who are smart tend to keep getting smart. This is just how life works. People with a poor mindset usually keep a poor mindset. Most broke people stay broke their entire lives. These things are all true. Yes, there are exceptions to this. There are exceptions, but exceptions prove rules. They do not debunk rules. You are in the business of finding the people who are already aligned with you, looking to get better and looking for what you're offering. And then you preach to that choir. That is your job. Your job is to preach to the choir of people who are looking for what you want. I told you about this in episode 1507. So. You have to be smart and selective about choosing where you go, meaning where you go, meaning who are you targeting and who you're talking to and also who you're attracting when you're in the thought leadership space. On that note, moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is I'm giving you some harsh truths about the thought leadership industry and the business that you are in as a thought leader. Point number two, who you are, you personally. Who you are is more important than what you sell. This is a very important point. Very important point. I was just on a, a Zoom call just yesterday with someone who is working in the, she works in the professional speaking industry. It's an industry that I have experience in, but I haven't really been focused on too much over the last couple of years. Really, our focus has really been all in work on your game university, not really focused on 
going out and landing speaking gigs and traveling and giving keynotes and stuff like that. Something that I am capable of doing and I actually do enjoy doing it. But I, if I had to pick one, I'd rather choose being in-house and having control over all of our who our customers and clients are and to say direct relationship with them rather than going out and doing speaking gigs. Personally, that's just how I am. However, there is opportunity in a professional speaking industry for someone such as myself that I am going to take advantage of. So as of this recording, the conversation is ongoing with someone. She works in the, the management side for professional speakers. In other words, she helps speakers get on stages. That's what she helps people do. And part of the conversation that I was having with this woman was that, Dre, look, you had a great message and potential to do great in the speaking business. However, the, the presentation materials that you have, your, your assets, they had to be presented in a certain way in order for you to book more speaking gigs. Like your website got to look a certain way, your, your highlight reel, like for speakers, there's a highlight reel. Some people call it a, a speaker reel or a demo video, whatever. That has to look a certain way. The full speeches or whatever you've done, they have to look a certain way. You got to have these pieces in place because that's the only way I'm going to be able to sell you because this is just the way the industry works. So what she was saying was, if she wasn't really critiquing my ability to speak or what I'm talking about, and she would be ridiculous to even do that, but that's not even the point. And this is the point that I'm making to you all. How good you are at your stuff, your coaching, your books, your podcasts, your speech, your frameworks, or whatever it is that you're giving to people is not nearly as important as how you present yourself and what people are seeing when they come across you. And understand that people, people other than you, when they look at you, they are not doing a deep dive on you to know everything about you and all the substance that you bring to the table. They're taking a quick glance at you and they're making a judgment call about you based on how you are presented. Meaning the way that you present yourself, this is the who you are part, this is more important than what you actually have to offer. This, the way you present yourself is more important than your substance. That's what I'm saying to you. Let me say it again. The way that you present yourself is more important than your substance. Yes, this is true. You may not like it. You may, not, you may wish that it was not like this. Because if it was just about substance, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> if it was just about substance, the entire industry of thought leadership would be different. The entire dating world would be different. Our Instagram would be different. Our OnlyFans might not exist. A lot of things in life would be different if it was all about the substance and not about the presentation. It is about the presentation for several reasons. Number one, human beings are lazy. We don't do deep dives to find out exactly what somebody's about. We look at what we can see on the surface and we make snap judgments based on that. You do it as well as other people do it. Secondly, we ain't got time to do that kind of deep dive on every single thing that we come across. We would go crazy because we, we would not be able to process because there's too many things being presented to us for us to do a deep dive on everything. So we got to judge off what we see on the surface, which means, folks, you must learn to play the game. I told you this in episode number 1210. Just learn how to play the game. All right. Don't be mad that the game is what it is. You may be shocked that I just told you what the game is. Now that you got over the shock, now actually play the game so you can win. Told you this in episode number 13, 14. Hustle is learning to play the game. Also in episode number 12, 10. Don't complain. Play the game. The game is the way you present yourself is more important than the actual substance. Because if your presentation doesn't get through people's filters, then they will never get deep enough to find out about your substance. Oh, and by the way, this applies in other worlds as well. This applies to any of you who's in the dating space. Any of you who's single and looking, this applies. If people can't get past your outward presentation, they'll never find out about your substance. So if your outward presentation is turning off potential partners, then they'll never find out how good of a person you are. I know Martin Luther King said a long time ago that he had a dream that one day people will be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. Well, I want to let you all know Martin Luther King is still dreaming. Why? Because people are still judged by their covers. Books are still judged by their covers, metaphorically speaking. He was talking about skin color, but I'm talking metaphorically about outward appearance. You are still judged by your outward appearance. People will never find out about how good you are on the inside if they don't like what they see on the outside. That's just the truth. It's not a fact. It's the truth. And there's a difference between the fact and the truth. The truth is a higher level. Who you are is more important than what you sell. So when I say who you are, what I mean is what people are seeing when they look at you. When they make a snap judgment about you, what impression are they getting? That's what I mean when I say who you are. So you are probably not the only person on the planet 
talking about the subject that you talk about. I highly doubt it. There are lots of people out there who talk about mindset, business, uh, how to make money, uh, relationship coaches. There are a bunch of personal trainers. There are a whole bunch of nutrition experts. There are thousands of people in whatever aspect of development or and growth you happen to be in. Whatever lane you're in, there's a bunch of other people in that same lane. So why should they pick you? You are far from the only one, which means you can't separate yourself by simply being better than everybody else. Because again, for somebody to find out that you're better, they would have to sample you, go into your stuff, and they have to go into other people's stuff so they can make an objective assessment of who you are. Understand that most human beings are not objective. They are extremely subjective. What does that mean? Subjective means based on people's feelings and their personal paradigms and their personal whims and their subjective reality of their lives, their myopic view of the world. That's how people judge things. People don't judge things objectively. Most human beings are far from objective and they couldn't be objective even if they tried. With a gun to their head, most people could not be objective. Now, I happen to be an anomaly amongst humans. This is the reason, one of my reasons for existing in the marketplace is that I can look at things objectively. I can tell someone who I have love and respect for that something that they're doing is garbage and not good. I'm able to talk to people objectively. I have an objective way of looking at the world that is, um, it can be very dispassionate, is extremely logical, and it can be cold in some ways, as I've been told. But this is one of my reasons for existing in the marketplace. I know how to look at things objectively. I have this ability. Most human beings do not have this ability. And even people who I know, I can trust many of them, most of them, as a matter of fact, do not have the ability to look at things objectively. They just can't do it. It's just it, it, there's no the wires in their brain do not connect in a way they're even capable of doing this, even if they had to. The point being, it doesn't matter because the way people judge things is how they see them, not how you want them to see. them. All right. People are not judging you objectively. They're judging you subjectively, how they see things, not how you see things. Or not how you would want them to see it. Okay? So it's not about you being better. Because again, better is better in itself is a subjective term. So you think you're better, but they don't think you're better. So what the, which one who's right? Who's right is the person who writes the checks. That's the person who's right. So if I think I'm the best speaker out of these 10 speakers that are lined up on the wall, but the person who writes the check says, Well, I think Dre is maybe number four, but I'm only booking the top three. And I didn't get the check. So it doesn't matter. That I think I'm better. No, it doesn't. See, what matters is the person who is making the rules. Yeah, all y'all know what the golden rule is, right? Golden rule says he who has the gold makes the rules. Let me say it again in case any of y'all didn't know about the golden rule. In the business world, this is the golden rule. Now, at church, the golden rule is do unto others as you would have others do unto you. All right, this is not church. All right, in the business world, here's the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. That's the golden rule. So if many of you didn't know the golden rule, if you want to be in business, you should probably operate by the golden rule. All right. The person who has the gold is the person who writes the checks. All right. That's the person you're trying to sell to, whether that be your customers, your clients, your whoever. They are the one who make the rules. So you need to find out what rules they operate by. and You got to play by those rules. Everybody understand? So this woman I've been speaking to, she works in the professional speakers world. She said, I could help you, but... Here's some edits and adjustments that need to be made before I can you know, work with you on a level that I think I could possibly help you. And I trust what she's saying is actually true. And she has connections to the people who have the gold. And if I want to play that game, good news is I don't have to play that game if I don't want to. But if I decide that I want to play that game, then I got to make some adjustments. Why? Because they got the gold. And if I want the gold that they have, then I got to play by the rules that they set. Everybody understand? Now, if I decide not to and I want to keep playing my game and play the game that I play over here and work on your game world where everything is in-house and I basically control the strings and I push the buttons, then I got the goal and I make the rules. But if I want to step into somebody else's game, I got to play by the rules that they set because I'm choosing to step into their game. So any of you who is doing this kind of work where you're going out and you're going from client to client to client and they have certain parameters and certain ways that things work, you got to play by their rules. This is the way that it works. Any of you ever had a job? Any of you got a job right now? Any of you a full-time employee? Okay, who makes the rules? Not you. The boss makes the rules. The people who write the checks, they make the rules. And sometimes they make some rules that you hate, that you uh, that annoy you, that really uh, get on your damn nerves. But guess what? You got to be quiet and take it because they got the goal. Is this true or is this not true? So all of you who are in the thought leadership space, you entrepreneurs, you solopreneurs, you those of you who are CEOs, you thought 
And when you got into this world that you could no longer, you no longer needed to adjust or abide by rules that other people set. Well, that is incorrect. You still do. It's just a matter of which rules and with who. And now again, if you want to step into that world, now if you just want to do everything in-house, well, there are certain things you got to do to put yourself in a position where you can do that. And many things I had to do over the years to put myself in a position to where I have a choice. But again, if I want to step into the other worlds, I understand what game I'm in. Again, this ain't about right or wrong, folks. Just know what game you're in. Just know the game that you're playing. Uh, we call this work on your game for a reason. You got to know what game you're in before you start working on your game. Everybody understand? There's a reason why I'm even having a conversation with this woman that I mentioned, because she's telling me some things about the game that I don't know because I don't pay attention to that game. She pays way more attention to that game than I do. So let me find out what's going on in that game by talking to someone who knows what I don't know. So this is where you got to humble yourself sometimes. Sometimes you got to have the humility of a student. There are other times you have the confidence of a teacher. Right? You got to know when to turn it on and turn it off and decide, right, do I want to turn it off? If you don't want to turn it off, then stay over there. But you have a choice. Everybody understand? Good. So most people cannot objectively tell who is better than who in anything. And they don't have any way to objectively measure. Most people make their measurements based on subjectivity, not objectivity. And for the most part, most people don't care anyway. Uh, even if you come into the room with an objective argument, most people, again, their brains are not wired to receive it. <laughs> All right, this is just how it is. Now, those of you who listen to this show, your brain is wired to receive it. I know I ain't talking to everybody. Right? This message is not for everybody in the world. There's some people who are listening to what I'm saying here and be turned off by it because, again, their brain is not wired to receive what I'm saying. They just can't comprehend what I'm talking about. But there are a few people, that's people like you, who can receive this. And that's what I'm talking to. I know who I'm talking to. I also know who I'm not talking to. See, people choose you based on who you are, or at least who they think you are, not the quality of your stuff, because they won't know about the quality of your stuff until something happens. Quality of your stuff is secondary to how you are presented, even tertiary to how you present yourself. So you are in the self-aggrandizement and personal marketing business. Aggrandizement just means talking yourself up. All right, that's the business you're in. You're in the business of making yourself look bigger and badder and better than you may actually be, or maybe as good as you actually are. Some of you are better than you present yourself, and some of you are worse than you present yourself. The whole point is the way you get the business is presenting yourself in such a way that attracts the people who you want to do business with. So I'm always looking for ways if someone can, tells me, hey, there's a way you can present yourself that will make you look even better so that your presentation matches better up to even how good you are. So always look for ways to make yourself look bigger, badder, better, because this does matter. And in today's world, this is a big thing. This is the way that people judge you, like it or not. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is some harsh truths about the thought leadership business. Number three, here's the most important point, folks. You are in business. All right. You are in business. What does that mean? That means the sales and marketing business. The only way that money moves in your world is for you to market and sell something to someone. That's the way money moves. It's only then that you get to do your thing. Speaking, coaching, healing, you know, helping relationships, helping people get in shape, etc. You can't do your thing until you sell something. All right. So you have to, you can't do the thing you love or maybe just like until something gets sold. This is why as a thought leader, you have to learn business more. You need to get better at the thing that you do. This is why, as a thought leader, you have to learn business more than you get better at the thing that you do. You're a speaker. It's not so much you need to learn how to give a speech. It's that you need to learn how to sell a speech or find someone who knows how to sell a speech and connect with them so they can sell you. But somebody got to sell something. All right. Most people in the thought leadership space focus too much on the thing and not enough on the business. Now, right, you're, you're in the sales business. Every single one of you, you're in the sales business. You're in the marketing business. You are not in the speech business or the coaching business or the training business or the uh, mastermind business or the full day consult business. Understand you don't make money for those things. You make money for selling those things. And yes, there is a difference. There's a distinction there. This is the reason why many people's business not, don't do as well as they want their business to do because you are simply focusing on the wrong thing. You want your business to do better than it's doing right now, which I think everybody would raise their hand to that question. Regardless of where your business is right now, your focus needs to be, be, be on getting better at the business, not better at the skill. Get better at the business. What's the thing that makes the register ring? What is that thing? At what moment in your business does the register ring? When you know what that is, 
You need to focus more on making that moment happen more often rather than the thing that happens after the register rings. So if what makes the register ring here at Work On Your Game is somebody deciding to go on my landing page and order one of my books. If that makes the register ring, I need to focus on how do I get more people to go order a book, not how do I write a better book. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? And this is a, a harsh reality that many entrepreneurs come to understand way too late in their business lives. Let's recap today's class, which is some harsh truths about the thought leadership business. Right. Many people here are in the thought leadership business. So I want to make sure you all understand what game you're in. Number one, you're targeting two to five percent of the population. Not everybody is actually interested. Not everybody will consume and not everybody will apply. And there are levels to all three of those. Not everybody's going to do let alone one of those, let alone two or three of them. Not everybody's interested. You're only talking to a small percentage of the population, but that's still a lot of people. There's a lot of people on the planet. Number two, who you are is more important than what you sell. When I say who you are, that means how other people perceive you, not who you think you are, but how other people are seeing you. This means the way you present yourself, what your social media looks like, what is your website, like, your photos, your videos, all of those things. What are people saying about you? If they Google you, all of those things matter a lot in terms of whether people will take the next step with you. And number three, most important point, you are in business, meaning you're in the sales and marketing business. And the only way you get to do your thing that you like doing or love doing is you got to get the register to ring. You got to get the money to move first. So if you love giving speeches. Only way you can give a speech is if somebody pays you to give a speech. So you got to sell the speech. Then you get to give a speech. If you like writing books, you got to sell some books. Then you get to write more books. Right, you don't want to be a person who's just creating but not focusing on the business. Don't focus so much on the creation side, not enough on the business side that you're not doing enough business to support the creation. All right, so again, put the cart before the horse or put the horse before the cart, right? Don't put the cart before the horse, put the horse before the cart. All that said, text me, let me know the best insight you got from today's class should also be in my text community. So however often we're going to send out the tip, text messages guaranteed to have you focused, sharp and on point, you'll be getting it. My number is 305-384-6894. Again, 305-384-6894 and work on your game university.com that is where i do all my coaching all my high level trainings frameworks and courses again at work on your game university.com that link is down below in the description work on your game dre all